Facebook friends and patients, I wanted to take a, a few minutes out of my lunch break today to talk to you about something that's very important. I counsel patients about it all the time. It's dairy, milk, uh, dairy products, the ones you should, you should not ingest, drink, and eat, and why. And so I hope that there's not too much ambient noise. We're having a lot of construction in Camden on the Court Square right now. So if you hear something that sounds suspiciously like a jackhammer, it probably is. So just ignore that, and I'm going to try to teach you just a thing or two on my lunch break today. So dairy, we're talking about milk, we're talking about cheeses, we're talking about cream, and everything in between. Uh, I want to go through why I believe th certain dairy products are bad, why I think that certain dairy products are medium or less bad, and then why I think some are pretty good. So let's start out with what is in milk and why is it bad? So the number one constituent in milk that I really want you to avoid is sugar. Milk has lactose, which is a milk sugar. It, it, when you drink milk of any kind, if it's a liquid form of milk, then it has milk sugar in it. This is going to raise your blood sugar, which is in turn going to raise your insulin level, which will ultimately cause you to gain weight. So when you're a young infant, a young mammal, a cow or a pig or a cute little puppy or a cute little baby, you want to gain weight as quickly as you possibly can. And that's why mammals, like your mom, gave you milk was so that you would gain weight and grow and develop as quickly as possible. So if you want to gain weight as quickly as possible, then you should drink more milk. And I tell patients that all the time and they're looking at me like, I don't, I don't want to gain weight. Well then stop drinking milk because that's what it's made for. And so that's the first concept I want you to get. The second concept is that drinking the milk from another mammal, it's never really been studied scientifically to see if it causes any long-term problems or not. That's an issue with me. I worry about that. I mean, I know we've drank milk for hundreds and hundreds of years from cows and goats and other mammals, but it's never been really rigorously scientifically studied to see if it causes long-term harm. Now, obviously, we know it's not a, a, an acute poison. You don't die immediately from drinking milk, but there are many things in our environment that turn out to be a long-term slow poison, and I believe that some versions of dairy are just that. So let's talk about the spectrum of dairy. I talk to patients about this all the time. If you can imagine a spectrum with this being the absolute worst and this being pretty good, maybe even good, so the worst possible dairy that you could consume is skim milk. All the fat's been removed and all is left is the milk sugar and the milk protein. For most people, the protein in milk is very inflammatory and causes problems either short term or long term. If you look at the world as a whole, over half of the population of the entire earth can't drink milk or they have immediate stomach upset and distress. So that should tell you something, that over half of the human beings on the planet can't drink cow's milk without having gastrointestinal problems. What does that say to you? So even the people who can, who don't have the enzyme to break down that protein, then that's not okay. That's still a problem because we've developed a little bit, but we haven't developed all the way. So skim milk being the absolute worst, half percent a little less bad, 1% a little less bad, 2% a little less bad. Whole milk is actually 4% milk fat. That's even a little less bad. Then you have half and half, right, which is much more milk fat left in there. And then you have heavy cream or whipping cream, which is just about my favorite dairy in the world, which is almost all the sugar and protein have been removed. Not all, but almost all. And so even people who are lactose intolerant can enjoy heavy cream or whipping cream without many side effects. And that tells me that that's probably safer for all humans, not just the ones who can digest lactose. Then, that, then we have the hard cheeses. Uh, in here somewhere we have uh, yogurts, we have kefirs, we have other semi-solid dairy products. Uh, then we have the, the very hard cheeses, Parmesan, we have Swiss, we have cheddar. And so I think those are over on the, the end of being probably not very bad for you at all or maybe even really good for you, okay? But skim milk is the absolute worst. Never drink that unless you're trying to gain weight as quickly as you possibly can or have gastrointestinal problems. And then we move along the spectrum to the very, very fatty dairy products, which I don't have a problem with. I eat 
heavy real cheese all the time. And if it says American cheese food product on the package, that ain't cheese, honey. Okay, that's not cheese. That's that's a factory product that came, and they're trying to make money off that. That's not an actual food. So if it says food product, I would recommend you avoid that. Now let's break down milk into its three categories, and let's talk about why it's good and why it's bad, and how come the heavy stuff, the the heavy cream and the hard cheeses, why are they suddenly okay? They're still dairy, right? Right. Okay, but we'll get there. So first of all, let's talk about the sugar in dairy. The sugar in dairy, is there's nothing magical about lactose. It is sugar. Your body immediately recognizes it as sugar. It absorbs it as sugar, and it does with it what it does with sugar. So if you're drinking a lot of skim milk every day thinking you're doing yourself a health favor, you're not because you're raising your, your blood sugar levels. Your liver is trying to store that as fat within the liver, which is a very, very bad thing. We'll probably talk about that on another go live the um, anytime you eat sugar of any kind, you are going to make yourself gain either a little or a lot of weight. And I don't think that's the goal for most of us. Back in the 40s, I found an old, old medical journal article years ago that actually counseled skinny athletes who could not gain weight to drink copious amounts of skim milk to gain weight. That's anecdotal proof number one and that's that's no medical or scientific proof but it, it does tend to give you an idea the other anecdotal story i have for you is when i was a teenage boy i really wanted to be a tight end and a defensive end playing football and for those of you who don't follow football you have to be really thick and heavy and big to be defensive end or to be linebacker or to be tight end and so I would, I, I, I went and got heavy cream, whipping cream from the store. I'd have my grandmother buy me some, and I would drink like a pint or a quart every day. And I did that for months on end, just knowing that all the fat in there would make me gain weight. Guess what? After about a year of that, I had gained exactly zero pounds. Now, if I'd had a smart old doctor who said, you know, you should get some skim milk and start drinking it, I may have had a different outcome. I don't know. But that's why the first constituent of milk, which is lactose, which is a sugar. There's no way around that. There's nothing magical about milk sugar. It is sugar, okay? The next constituent is protein. Now, the reason that many people have terrible trouble when they drink any kind of dairy is because they're allergic to the milk protein or they have an inflammatory response in their gut to the milk protein. And trust me, that's not good. You don't want that. You can have gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, all these different problems and then many, many people are now starting to think that perhaps long-term inflammatory and even autoimmune conditions are coming from these proteins that our body really wasn't made to break down in large quantities. So the, the, the proteins in liquid milk are designed especially for baby cows. That's what it's for. And their body knows exactly what to do with the proteins in milk, in cow milk, and it, it does that just fine. They have no problem, and, and you've probably seen a baby calf and then seen that calf two months later, how much bigger it had become. And that's because it was drinking milk as much as it could get on a daily basis. The last constituent of milk is fat, right? And this is the, the constituent of milk that's been demonized for about the last 50 or 60 years. That's why we want skim milk and we want low fat, this, that, or the other because we think the fat's bad, because that's what we've been taught by the federal government and perhaps by our doctor and by a nutritionist and by a nurse, is that the fat is the bad part and you want to get that out. And so you never see a cheese or a, um, a dairy product in the store that says protein free. You never see that because we're not really afraid of that because we haven't been trained to be. The fat in milk is not the bad part, okay? That's why I love the fat in heavy cream and in cheeses is because that's not bad for me. We were taught for years that it was, but even the federal government has come out and said that fat is not a macromolecule of concern. There's no maximum amount you should eat or drink every day of fat. They're not worried about fat. And you watch over the next five years, that's gonna trickle down to the, to the doctors and to the hospitals, and all of a sudden we'll all just magically know that fat's no big deal and we shouldn't even worry about that. I'm a little ahead of the curve there, but I promise you if you do your Googling and you research this like a good patient and a good person should, you're gonna find out that what I'm saying is correct. So 
the fat in dairy is not the problem. That's the least bad of all three. So if, you're, if you want to put heavy cream in your coffee, I do that every morning. Okay, and my cholesterol is 145. I've been steadily losing weight while I've been doing that. Some of my patients may have noticed, yeah, I think he is slimming up a little bit. That's because I've been eating and drinking way more fat in my diet lately. So don't be afraid of the fat. So let's talk about cheese because that's kind of confusing to some people. Cheese is dairy, so then how come cheese is not bad? So let's talk about what happens when you make cheese or when you make yogurt or when you make any semi-solid or solid dairy product. You expose the milk, the liquid milk, to a microbe of some sort, okay? It's either a, a fungus or a bacteria or some combination of the two, and they eat up almost all the sugar. So there's your sugar gone. That's good. That's problem number one solved. But then they actually act on the protein in the dairy, and they bend it and contort it, and they change the molecular shape of the protein. That's what makes cheese a solid instead of a liquid. That's what the microbe does to it. The microbes don't eat the fat because that's not what bacteria and, and stuff like that like. They like the sugar. And so they leave all the fat and they leave the bent and contorted protein molecule. That's what cheese is. Now, some companies will try to take the fat out of the cheese, leaving just the protein, and but they usually have to add chemicals, which I'm not so happy about, back into the cheese to make it a viable, tasty cheese food product. But what you want to get is real cheese. It's real dairy that's been acted on by a microbe. The, the sugar is virtually gone. The protein has been messed with by the molecule that, that to make it way less inflammatory for your body. And then all the fat is left, which is the good part that's not going to hurt you at all. So that's why I recommend to my patients, you can eat real cheddar, you can eat real Swiss, real Parmesan. There's no problem with any of these cheeses. What you want to avoid is the Block Vita, that, you know, sort of pseudo cheese, don't eat that. That's probably not good for you. And then anything that says cheese food product, mm -mm, no, that's probably from the factory. That's probably a product, not a real food. So I would highly recommend that you do not eat that. So again, the spectrum, skim milk is the absolute worst. Heavy cream and the real cheeses are either the least bad or good for you. And, and the spectrum is anywhere in between. So if you change your diet and get rid of the skim milk and get 2% instead, that's a little less bad, okay? I recommend most adults don't drink any liquid milk at all because we're grown. We don't need to gain weight as quickly as possible. So if you've enjoyed this or if you have questions about this, I want you to leave a comment, click the like button. But most of all, if you have any friends or relatives who are overweight, who are trying to lose weight but failing, who have diabetes or insulin resistance or just can't seem to get healthy, I want you to tag them in this video or give them a heads up to watch this video. I'm going to go back down, downstairs and start seeing patients in a few minutes, but I'm going to be checking back with this through the day. So if you have any questions, type them in below and I'm going to answer every single question and reply to every question or comment that I get. Okay. So also if you can think of a great topic that you would like for me to talk about in the future, also comment on that because I would love to talk about what you want to talk about. I wish that Misha could have been with me today, but she's catching babies up at McKenzie and labor and delivery. So she couldn't be here, but maybe she can be with me in the next one. Okay. Have a good day guys.